Hi there, I, my name is Kim Smith and I'm with Adventures in Coaching and I am here today with Mark Eaton who is a financial advisor from Edward Jones on Market Street in Eagle and we're going to talk a little bit about his professional journey uh, from where he is today to like how he started out and all of the challenges along the way. So welcome Mark, it's so great to have you here. Thanks for having me Kim. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about what you're doing now. Well, I'm a financial advisor for Edward Jones. My office is on Market Street in Eagle. Yeah. And I've been with Edward Jones about three years, but I had an extensive career in finance before that. Right, right. And I was so excited when we started talking about your career because it really highlights a lot of the different changes that people go through in their career and some challenges and all of that. So tell me a little bit about how you started out. Well, it was, I was young. It was a long time ago. I was 16 years old. I just graduated high school in England uh, and, um, uh, and I applied for a job as a messenger in a mailroom for a financial uh, company in the, uh, in the city of London, the financial district of London. Uh, and uh, well, I uh, worked my way up uh, from the bottom, really. I got, uh, first of all, I got the opportunity, so I was mm -hmm. quite excited about that. But what I did, I just did what I was told. Uh, I was smart enough to take my exams. I've got my first exam at 18, uh, UK equivalent of Series 7, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, worked my way up the company uh, 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 into futures and options trading by the time I was 18. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and then, uh, then I moved on, uh, moved from open outcry pit trading, which is what, where I started, uh, most people wouldn't have ever heard of that now because everything's done electronically. And then I, my career evolved from uh, from open outcry pit trading to electronic trading from a trading desk up in an office. And then I got the opportunity to move to uh, to America and Chicago uh, with the company I was with at the time. Uh, and uh, I, I built a trading desk uh, and uh, had a long career uh, at a futures brokerage, institutional futures brokerage company in Chicago. Yeah, so you've really had a lot of steps that kind of took you through from the very beginning where you started at 16, which is just amazing. Yeah. Um, and when we were talking, you told me about how like you really knew and you felt like this was your purpose when you started at 16. Like you're like, this is a career opportunity. So talk to me a little bit about that. And then also the big change you had to make from going on or being on the trading floor to the electronic uh, world of sure. you know, trading and what that looked like for you. I always took the opportunity when I was given a chance to, uh, to progress in my career and take more responsibility, I never turned that down. If I wanted to move up, I just grabbed the responsibility and that mm -hmm. included trading, it included moving. When, when I saw things going electronic, I, I jumped from the trading floor to the office when, when the first opportunity came up. Uh, and uh, I've, I've always grabbed opportunity, seen the future. You, you know, the, the future that doesn't happen that quickly. So you get to see things changing in the economy. Right. And through, uh, uh, so so I, I, I took advantage of, uh, of uh, seeing what was gonna happen. Really. Yeah, and it sounds like you really put yourself out there and, and grabbed onto those opportunities and probably learned what you needed to learn to grow, which is so much about like how, you know, how important it is when we're trying to grow in our careers to really like say, hey, you know, yes, pick me, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this extra work and go that extra mile. And it sounds like you really did that. Indeed, I was always dedicated uh, at that part of my life to, to, to my industry. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes my family took a bit of a back seat because I was always trying to move up in the company and, and do well and, uh, and take on more responsibility. Right. Uh, but also when uh, I wanted to make that move, uh, when an opportunity came up to move to America, mm -hmm. uh, I was in a position in my, with my young family at the time to be able to do that and not be too scared about making that big yeah. jump when I, I, fortunately I was supported by the company I was with to make that move. So uh, that, that, that helped as well. 
Right, so that must have been very exciting and a big challenge. And you told me that you thought maybe it was going to be a two or three year opportunity at the most. Indeed. And tell me a little bit about what happened there. Yeah, that was the initial plan mm -hmm. uh, uh, that I'd be going back home after three years. And I thought that that gave me a bit of a comfort zone, I guess. Mm -hmm. But then one after I got there, my wife and I just loved living in the southwest suburbs of Chicago. Uh, we thought it was a great place to bring up our, our two young daughters. Uh, and uh, we asked for the opportunity to stay. My business was going really well. I was still, I was working nights at the time, talking to my European-based clientele uh, uh, in European hours. So the company I was with said, absolutely, you're, you're doing great business. We'll support you to, do, to, to continue this. And they got me a green card. So yeah. the rest is history after that, really. Yeah, that's really the American dream, right? You know, be able to come and grow your career. And, and you know, in your case, you were able to stay. And, um, you know, that's just amazing. So talk to me a little bit about what happened sort of towards the end of Chicago and then how you ended up in Colorado. Yeah, so... Uh, I was working for another company at the, at the, at the time, and I'm, I was running a trading desk of, of 20 plus uh, 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 employees. And the company that, that I was working for asked me to start laying off those employees. Mm -hmm. That wasn't any fun for me. Right, that's hard. Uh, I don't think it's fun for anyone, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But it became, uh, uh, we got to a stage where I couldn't see the business running, running well, and it was just clear that they wanted the business to be in New York. So again, I saw the future coming, so I made plans to, to make a change. Uh, I started building my home here in Colorado, and, and we knew that things would change. So, uh, so I made the plan, and, and when there wasn't any other opportunity to stay in, chi in Chicago, I, uh, I, I took the opportunity to, to take severance and, uh, and, uh, and move with my family to uh, Colorado, and my children were at just graduating high school or college at the time. So that was an also right. fortunate time. Yeah, that sounds so exciting and also challenging. You know, what were some of the things that you put in place to make sure that you were going to be able to sort of land on your feet when you came to Colorado? Well, I've always found and planned for the future. Mm -hmm. So in terms, in terms of making sure that financially, I haven't got any strings attached to make those changes. Right. And that includes making sure I don't have a lot of like debt to pay. So if you make those changes, you've really only got like major bills, like your next mortgage to move into. And uh, uh, so you don't have like debt around your neck. You, 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 you make sure that you've got a solid plan for if anything does go wrong for if you need to make a change. Uh, right. So that just gives you the support and makes you not too worried mm -hmm. that you can make these changes by preparing for it. I call it the five P's. Oh, that's great. So proper planning prevents poor performance. Okay, that's a good one to remember. I'm gonna <laughs> yeah. write that down. And I always talk to people about when they're looking to change their career, you know, among other things, run the numbers, you know, make sure you have a runway, make sure you've got the right amount of savings to support you. You know, maybe you have to go and get a part-time job for a while to, right. you know, while you're getting established in a new career. Now, I know this isn't a new career for you, but it was definitely a pivot in terms of, what you're doing within the financial industry, and you had to really, uh, you know, start out on yeah. your own, so to speak, here in Colorado. So, yeah, it's it's very exciting to hear that. And, and how are you doing today? And and you know what? Uh, well, what where you, I was at, I was dealing mm -hmm. with institutions and trading futures and options and and putting on hedges for large companies. And what I'm doing now, I'm I'm helping my uh, clients, my friends, my community to to make uh, intelligent and quite emotional like changes to their personal finances. Right. So, so making sure my clients stay the course, know what this, we've seen in the past will hopefully guide us in the future to the future good investments. Right. And, uh, and it's so difficult nowadays, especially with the volatility in the markets for, uh, for people to stay the course right. and trust and trust, uh, trust what we've seen in, 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 uh, these times of change in, in history. Yeah, and it certainly has been changing. And how fulfilling has this been for you? I really enjoy it. I, yeah. I, where I was in a dog-eat-dog -dog world where <laughs> everyone, my, my colleagues would try and take my clients if I was away on vacation for too long, uh, now I get the support from my family, my colleagues, even in different Edward Jones branches, 
we are so, so, such a strong community that I know I can trust everyone. Uh, so that's impo really important to me. Yeah. It's totally different from my last career in institutional finance. Yeah, that must be really wonderful to have that here and be building that sense of communi community. So if somebody really wanted to get a hold of you uh, to find out more about how to work with you, how would they do that, Mark? Yeah, absolutely. So my door's always open at uh, Edward Jones, uh, we're 56 Market Street. Uh, and they can just call me on 970-328-0639 yep. or email me at mark.eaton at edwardjones.com. Well, awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here today and sharing your story and your journey. It's very inspiring. Um, with that, uh, if you're interested in learning about how coaching might help you on your journey, please reach out to me at Kim at adventuresincoaching.com or just go to my website, adventuresincoaching.com. And again, thanks, Mark, and um, have a great day.